Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show with me, Dan Wendell, owner of the Dolphin Financial Group. Today's topic, as you can tell, is going to be Social Security. But we're going to be very specific. We're going to be hyper-focused on divorce and Social Security. And to join me and help me with this discussion is going to be Tony. Tony Shore, welcome to the show. Good oh, to see you. Oh, we're on. Yes. Great to doing? see you, Dan. You fell asleep because we're talking about divorce? <laughs> Social Security, you're like, oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> well, I heard the D word, and that's not that's never good. But you know what? It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, we're on. We're live. I didn't realize the cameras were rolling. You know, they always are, Tony. Someone's always watching. And my, I was just doing some research on my YouTube channel, Dolphin Financial Group's channel, and oh, I love the that. Most the most popular video was you and I talking about social security oh really yes oh i thought it was the goofy promo you and i did (laughs) oh yes the show promo yeah it's gonna be coming back by the way i'm gonna be bringing that back as a show opener Uh, or i'm stomping across the city as godzilla yeah yeah that's that's terrible it turns out that the show called uh marriage divorce social security marriage divorce and death was the top rated show most watched most questions so what i want to do is i noticed a lot of the questions on that show are about divorce so i want to just focus solely on divorce and social security okay the listeners okay sure so uh let's get right into it when it comes to social security you always want to start with your own record so when people start thinking about hey can i claim against a spouse or an ex-spouse the answer is yes, under certain conditions, what we'll get to, but you still have to claim against your own, usually. So what happens is you can get half of your ex-spouse's Social Security, but only if it's at least more than your own, because you don't get both. So that's, that's key for people to realize. You don't get both Social Securities. You don't get your own and your ex-spouse. You only get your own or half of your ex-spouses. So that's usually the first thing people um, don't realize or they they get excited about. Well, sure. Spousal benefits. uh, I think people have misconceptions about those. And uh, that's a huge part, though, of Social Security. You want to take advantage of spousal benefits. Right. And it used to be that... um, there was only one person working in the family. So usually only one person had a good social security record. The other person had none, but that's since changed. So if you think about it, let's say the top social security benefit is three grand. Um, if you, if your ex spouse is getting three grand, you're not going to get three grand. If, if you, if you don't have social security, you'll get 1500. So yours has to be less than 1500. So that's kind of <laughs> why the ex spouse Getting half the ex-spouse doesn't really apply for as many people as they would like. You know, they all say, oh, my ex-wife was loaded. She worked and worked. I want her Social Security. No, you can only get half. Now, Uh, another issue is if you decide to take your ex-spouses, let's say you're 62, Tony, and your ex-spouse is 63, and you want to take half of your ex-spouses. You don't get half of your ex-spouses at 62. You get... uh, half but you get it reduced because you're taking it early yeah so it's not you have to it's your full retirement age even if it's your spouse's that uh, you have to wait until right so if you claim social security before your full retirement age you're getting a reduction you that reduction is going to apply to your own record or half of your ex-spouse's record it doesn't matter which one you take it's still going to get reduced so theoretically if you take your ex-spouse's Social Security record at 62, you're getting you're getting less than half because you're going to get a reduction about 75%. So you're going to get 75% of half, which, what is that, 40%? I can't do the math that quick. <laughs> you're the numbers guy. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> no, come on, no. Well, I'm not the say, numbers guy. I can say the most you will get from an ex-spouse is half at your full retirement age. Oh, okay. Right? 
So right. you, you said you said at your full retirement age, which for a lot of people right now is over sixty six. Um, it's like sixty six and four months for people that are turning sixty five or uh, sixty uh, full retirement age now. So eventually, for you and I, it's going to be sixty seven. So at sixty seven, you'll be able to get all of the half. <laughs> hmm. So 50%, sure, right? the full fifty, yeah. So can you, when you talk about filing against your spouses or using getting half of your spouses, is that then in addition to when you file for your own or is that instead of, how does that work? Uh, That's a good question. So you can coordinate benefits with an ex-spouse just like you can with an existing spouse. Um, Mm. And I'll get to that for sure. The key is a lot of people ask this, if I take against my ex-spouse, will he know about it? Will he know about it? Because they don't want to deal with their ex-spouse. Typically, right, right. Typically, right? And the answer so, is no, right? The, no, it doesn't. Know, it doesn't but... affect your ex-spouse's benefit. It doesn't, they are, don't know. It's, it has nothing to do with them, really, even though you're filing on their benefits. Right, right. And, you know, there'll be some bad marriage breakups where it's like, hey, I have my own record, but can I take my ex-spouse's Social Security so they can't get it? Or better yet, can I take my social, my ex spouse's social security so their new wife can't get it? All right. Uh, and the answer to that is no. No, no, it yeah. doesn't work that way. No. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So before we get into how to claim against an ex spouse and, and uh, some ways to coordinate it based on your earlier question, I want to go over a few rules because there are rules about an ex spouse. And the biggie, the number one rule is you have to have been married for 10 years. And that 10 consecutive years, that's been a question I've gotten. Can I get married Mm. for five, break up, get back? No, it's got to be 10 consecutive years. And um, the big big lesson here is I've seen people that have been married for nine years and, you know, 10 months. They, and then get divorced, they do not qualify for ex-spouse benefits at all Mm. because they weren't married for 10. And that also goes for if they if their ex spouse dies. So, and I'm going to get to that next. But key, if you're thinking about getting divorced and you're in the nine year range, see if you could delay that divorce to after ten years. Delay the paperwork, kick the can, just so you can get in the system. They don't. I haven't seen the Social Security office make exceptions to any of that. Ever. Huh. Okay. Okay. So rule another it's good rule. Good to know. You, you can't get remarried. So if you're, you know, divorced and you're thinking, hey, I was married for 10 years or 11 years, I can claim against my ex-spouse. Uh, if you get remarried, you can no longer claim against that ex-spouse. So you can't get mm-hmm. half. You got to work with your existing spouse. That's, okay. that's an issue. Um, so if you're thinking about getting remarried, consider your Social Security benefits if you don't have a, your own good record and your ex did. And then your new spouse doesn't really have a record, you know, so sure. it's a unique spot. It's a unique spot. Um, the one spot where a lot of uh, divorces or divorcees get tripped up is, hey, I am 62. I want to claim half of my ex-spouse. Hmm. I understand I'm going to get a reduction because I'm taking it early. Yeah. Why can't I claim against my ex-spouse? And the answer is usually your ex-spouse isn't old enough. So your ex has to be eligible for Social Security, which typically means they're 62 years old. Now, if they're on disability, that's another story. But for most people, um, if you want to claim against your ex-spouse, your ex-spouse has to be uh, eligible to claim Social Security. They Mm. do not have to be claiming Social Security. They don't have to be claiming Social Security. They just have to be eligible. So you don't have to force them to claim so you can Oh, wow. Okay, that helps. There is a little bit of a little a little rule here, Tony. That is also one that trips people up. It's a unique. It's it's not doesn't happen very often, but with all the gray divorces lately, if you get divorced at say sixty two, mm-hmm. you can't claim, and your spouse is sixty two, you can't immediately claim half of theirs. You have to have been if they're not claiming. If they're claiming, you could claim half. But if they're not claiming, you have to wait two years. Oh, I didn't know about that rule. Yeah. 
That's yeah. weird. There's so many, as you talk here, Dan, it's so crazy because there's so many weird, just like tax, just like the tax code, the government, it seems like they do this with everything. Social security is no exception. There's so many different rules and ins and outs. Uh, I really don't know how people do this on their own. And that's why I know you have a proprietary software you use that does like 20,000 different calculations to help people figure out based on their information, their personal situation, their time horizon, their age, their full retirement age, uh, their amount, their benefit amount. Uh, you, you can maximize it, look at spousal benefits, and I think that's great. Uh, obviously, uh, divorce throws another uh, wrench into that, and so it does get complicated, doesn't it? It gets complicated, but that's what the software is for. The, the hard part for a lot of people is understanding how all the rules. So it just takes research. They watch videos like this. This is how people get their information about Social Security. Because if you go to the Social Security office, which are currently closed with COVID, yep. um, it, it's tough because the Social Security office staff, they're not allowed to sit there and coach you. They're not allowed to say, let's try this. Let's run this. All they are allowed to do is say, here are the rules. Here's the paperwork. What kind of questions do you have about it? If you're not proactively asking and saying, hey, I was married for this long, or how long do I have, you know, that you can ask those questions, but you may not be prompted by Social Security to actually ask. Sure. Them. So that's why you need to do some research ahead of time. And you're right, I do have software. I will put up a link later on in the video so people can actually uh, apply. Uh, and there's no cost for that to give me their some of their basic info and I can give them a report that they can then take with them to the social security office. That's great. Or, or actually have it in front of them when they're calling. Cause that's more yeah. likely what's going to happen. Yeah. Now you can call uh, the social security offices. Uh, you can do it online or call. That's for sure. Still. Yeah. yeah. But you never know um, how long it's going to take to get someone on the phone and you got to hope you get someone knowledgeable. Right. And yeah. So, and uh, they, they aren't always knowledgeable. The people you yeah. talk to. You might get two different answers from two different people at the office. So you really have to go in knowing the answers, knowing what you want, and help and have them facilitate it for you. Um, so back to the rules for claiming against an ex. So they have to be eligible, but you also have to be eligible. You can't claim Social Security against an ex if you're 55. Right. Unless you're disabled. Right? So you have to be 62. That's or older. Yep. 62 right. or older. Yep. Or older. And the bottom line, again, is um, when technically, when you go and claim against an ex-spouse, you're actually claiming against your own first, and then you're getting a step up if the step up is there. So, Tony, you're 62. You have a very small Social Security of $300. Your wife has, your ex-wife has $2,500. So you're like, I want half of that. I want $1,250. Mine's only 300. What they say, fine, you what you could do that. You're going to get a reduction because you're only 62. But we could do that. What's going to happen is you would apply, you would get your own 300 first, reduced by being early, and then they would step up based on your ex spouse. So you're always claiming against your own first and then getting. And the, the ah. reason why that's important is because you can't, you're not. Um, switching from your own to your ex-spouse's and back and forth, you're filing on your own and then getting a step up. Ah, okay. Which is important to note because you can't claim against an ex and then claim against your own later. Unless right. they died. Unless they died. And I'll get to that. So, <laughs> okay. all right. So what what do you need? What do you need? All right. I, I, I get it, Dan. I, I understand I'm going to get a reduction if I take it before my full retirement age. I understand I'm going to get half. I'm already over 62. My ex-spouse is eligible, so they're over 62. Uh, I know the numbers. I want to do it. What do I need to do? How do I – What? Do, you have to contact Social Security office, but here's the info you're going to need. You're going to need proof of birth. You're going to need a birth certificate. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you're going to need a naturalization certification certificate. So you have to prove who you are. You need, you're going to need some tax info, and the tax info is – they want to know if they need to reduce your benefit based on your work history or something like that. So if that's another discussion. But if you claim Social Security before your full retirement age and you're still working, you don't get it all. 
if you make above a certain amount. So they want to know what your tax situation is. But they're going to need your divorce decree, divorce decree and marriage certificate. And that could be a trip up for a lot of people because they don't necessarily save that. You know, some people might have their uh, d divorce decree hung on their wall in their living room to remind Framed. them. Framed. Nice oak right. frame. <laughs> right. So they could take that down, bring that sure. to the office. But, but a lot of times they don't have their marriage certificate. Sure. So what you wind up doing a lot of times is calling up the township you got married in and, and requesting that marriage certificate because you need that. You need to prove that you were married to this person yep. and that you were divorced. And they're going to look at those dates to make sure it says how many years, Tony? How many years uh, do they have to be married? Oh, 10. At ten, least 10. Right. Yeah. So they're going to look at those. That's how they check. Yeah. So all this is for not if you weren't married a full 10 years. So That's right. just That's to right. clarify. Yeah. And you also need to know your ex-spouse's social security number. So a lot of people mm. don't have that. So it's good to know. Right. I don't, you know, my, my wife knows all, everything about me. But if you told me what's her social security number, I'd be like, <laughs> one, two, three, four. You know? Yeah. Like, it goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. But uh, if you don't know your ex's social security number, you're not out of luck. I've had this happen. You need to know their date of birth and you need to know their parents' names. So you might need to know their maiden name if they were, you know, so, and then they can look them up in the system. So mm. you got to, you got to come prepared with that. So you go to the office, you say, I want against my ex spouse. Here's my data. Here's the info. And they'll help you with it. They'll help you with it. They'll run the numbers and say, actually, and you don't need to know what your ex spouse is making. You don't need to know. Oh, I think they're making, you go there and they'll tell you, yeah, here's what you would get. Here's the bump up you'll get. So it's worth it. Even if you're not wow. sure. Yeah. If you were married 10 years or longer, this is definitely worth it because you're going to get a bump up in your Social Security. Why wouldn't you? And it doesn't affect your ex-spouse's Social Security. Uh, it just gives you more. So I think that's a no brainer. And, you know, there are a couple of hoops to jump through there, as you mentioned, you know, the, you know, marriage certificate, uh, divorce decree. Um, your, your ex-spouse's social security number, if you can get it. Uh, so, but those are, I mean, you can get those things, you know, it's just yeah, a simple I'll, matter of requesting them or finding them. So I'll, I'll tell you a story that, and it. then we'll, I'll get into the whole, the next topic, which we'll go through quick. But um, I had a client, um, I met with her and she was complaining about her income and we were doing an income plan. I asked her about social security and she said, my husband, um, I don't. I didn't get Social Security. I, I worked in my parents' gas station when I was little, hmm. and so she never had a Social Security record. And I said, uh, "Well, what about your your husband that just passed?" And she said, "No, he worked for the government, so he she gets his government pension, but he didn't put into Social Security either." And that was kind of the end of it. And then I said, I, I kept digging, and she said, uh, "I said, how long were you married?" And she said, "Oh, twenty eight years or something." And I was like, "You said you got married right." you were living with your parents in the gas station above the the gas station you got married and she was 60 i think five at the time i'm like you got you lived with your parents above the gas station until you're in your 30s she's like no no i got married to my first husband when i was 20 and then we got divorced and then years later i met my latest husband and then we were married for 20 something years ah so all of a sudden her first husband was my new yeah best friend I sure like, tell me more tell me more Turns out she was married just over 10 years. And so I said, do you realize that you can get your first husband's Social Security, even though you don't have your own Social Security and your most recent husband didn't have Social Security? She's like, no way. I'm like, yes. So we found out she was married for over 10 years. So that was the first part. Then she had to call up a township in New Jersey to get the marriage certificate because she didn't have it. Right. She had a divorce decree. She didn't know his Social Security number, but she called up her ex-sister-in-law and got that. So that helped. She wow. went to She went to the Social Security office with this data and said, what do you say? What do you think? And she's, she started getting a check for $1,800 a month because she didn't know if her ex was alive or dead. Turns wow. out he was dead. So she gets all of his. She got all of his because he died. So let's talk about that now that she loves me because i was you know adamant about it she's getting now it's probably closer to two two thousand a month wow that's life changing for her that is she, well yeah that's a that's a huge bump she didn't realize it she's like thank goodness we were married for over 10 years she's yeah like, i, I kind of wanted it to end earlier but she held out but 
not knowing at the time. So <laughs> let's talk about survivor benefits. If your ex-spouse dies, same rules apply. You have to have been married for 10 years. So you can't you get married for five years, get divorced, and then that ex-spouse dies. You're like, all right, you know, give me some of that. No. Um, but here's a little difference between claiming against a deceased spouse versus a living ex-spouse. You get sure. you you can get all of their benefit because now you're not getting half. You're getting a survivor benefit, mm. and you don't have to wait till sixty two to get it. You have to wait till you could get it at sixty. Really? Because there's a rule: a survivor benefit can start as early as sixty. Hmm. Now. 60 year old is not going to get a lot of money. They're going to get 71 and a half percent of the benefit mm -hmm. because they're taking it so darn early. It's greatly reduced then. But what you could do at 60, and this is important, this is a trick that people don't realize. At 60, your ex spouse of 10 years or more has died. You saying, Hey, I got a decent record on my own. Um, you didn't you just get done saying if I claim against an ex, I have to claim against my own and get a step up, not on death. So as a survivorship benefit, you could claim against an ex at 60, continue to let yours grow, and then switch to your own at your full retirement age. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, So that is a trick that people don't realize. Or you could you could take your own at 62. And then switch to your ex deceased ex spouse full benefit at 60 at your full retirement age. Wow. So there's a little bit more leeway if your ex spouse has died. So it's good to there's know so many different there. strategies to get more money out of Social Security. And I just don't think people realize that. And yeah. and I want to I want to make sure Dan that people understand you don't make any money off this helping people with Social Security. Uh, and we're not making, it's not like we're trying to sell a pamphlet or a guide or get you to call up and order something or, uh, you know, sign up for anything. This is just to help people out. And people just don't know a lot of these strategies. You, you mentioned a few, I thought I knew everything about social security maximization, to be honest, because we've done shows about it before and I've heard a lot about it, but there are things there I didn't know. Uh, I did not know. Uh, that you file against your own, and that's an added. And I didn't know how it worked uh, if a spouse dies. Uh, I knew the 10-year rule. I knew some of these rules. But there are so many. I, it's just like I keep hearing about more strategies and options. And so this is a great show for our listeners, especially for those who uh, have been divorced. That throws a whole other uh, caveat into it and, and what, what's able to be done there. Yeah, and I would argue that divorces, the people that have gone through a divorce are at a financial disadvantage a lot of times. Oh, sure. So this yeah. is even more important for them. Yes. Um, one more rule before we finish up. Okay. If you are planning to use a survivorship benefit, mm -hmm. so your ex-spouse has died and you're like, oh, at 60, I can get that, switch to my own, mm -hmm. you know, that I could switch to my own after 62 if I want. Um, you can't be remarried before 60. So if your spouse is alive and you get remarried, you can't claim against them. But if you get remarried after age 60, you could still claim against a deceased ex-spouse. Hmm. So the, the trick is, if you're going to get remarried late in life, around 60, you may want to hold off until after 60 so you could still claim against the ex-spouse if they die. Hmm. Weird situation, right? Yeah, really weird, weird situation. It's like, um, when should we get married? Let's set a date. Well, let's uh, let's wait one year because then we'll be over 60. <laughs> and, and by that same token, I've, I've actually helped people in the I helped one particular woman in her 80s who she was married prior to age 60. Sure. And her current husband didn't have Social Security. She didn't have Social Security, but her ex-husband who died did. And she got divorced in her 80s on paper so she could claim against the deceased first husband. And she's still living with 
in sure. sin, I guess, with her current husband <laughs> who she divorced. She got sin. divorced <laughs> so she could get Social Security. So it does happen. I am it's not crazy. a matchmaker. I'm a match breaker, I guess. But oh. um, so all of these things come up in the software. If you're interested as a widow or an, a widower or you're a divorcee and you're like, hey, I'm overwhelmed. You just said so many rules. Can you go through it again? Just rewatch the video or contact me. Go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and there's a social security tab. You can click on any, anywhere within there, there's a contact us button. And you just type in there, hey, I want that social security maximization report. And I will connect with you online or the phone. You can call the number and I'll run the software for you, send it to you via email, and you'll have that printout. You'll have that data in front of you. And then you can always call with questions. And like I said, like Tony said, I'm not looking to sell this to you. I, you right. can have it. My objective is I'm a retirement planner, and my life is so much easier when people have their Social Security Act together. They typically, people come back and say, okay, thank you for helping me with that. Now I need help with this other stuff. And that's where I help people, and I make money charging people for advice. For this, it's just a way to get to know me, and I think it's so helpful. It doesn't take a lot of time for me to run this report for you, but the data and the info you get could change your life. So take advantage of that. And uh, that's at just got dolphinfinancialgroup.com. And the other thing to note, disclaimer, I don't work for Social Security. They don't endorse me. I got the picture in my background, but I don't work for Social Security at all. And I don't charge for this. This is just a service to people, to, to my clients, to help them with their Social Security planning. So always, always, always have to go to the Social Security office to get the final answer. But my recommendation is go there with the information. Knowledge is power. The more you know going into the Social Security conversation, the better off you'll be because it is a lifetime decision. It's huge. A lifetime decision. And it's the basis of your retirement income. It's the it's the foundation of everyone's. I don't care how much money or how little money you have. Uh, it's the foundation. Social Security is the foundation of your retirement income for the majority of Americans out there. That's right. And it's got yeah. a cost of living increase. Never enough, but it's got something. It's <laughs> yeah. Ta it's not all of it's taxed, which is great. So some of it's going to be tax free. And it's backed by the best government in the world. Yep. So, I mean, three strikes. You're in. Yeah. So I think uh, Social Security is a good one. And if anyone has questions, please contact me. I'd be happy to help. Tony, thanks for a good show. Thanks yeah, for great sticking with me. Um, I know Social Security can be a little boring, especially. <laughs> but this was about divorce. Neither neither of us are divorced. But it's yep. good to know because we a lot of people get divorced. Uh, and a lot of people getting divorced later in life, they need to know this stuff. So yeah. thanks for joining me. And, thanks, and I hope you guys have a great day.